in January of 1964, I sold my first novel, which was called The Sterile Cuckoo. And they gave me $500 advance. And I remember getting it in $100 bills and putting it in my sock and getting on a bus for Guatemala. And I went down to Guatemala, this is in February or March of 1964, to visit a dear friend of mine who was on a Fulbright grant um, in Guatemala City. And I only spent um, two months in Guatemala. And I went to Guatemala on a kind of a lark. I'd never been to Central America. And, and the bus trip from New York City to Guatemala City is one of those Jack Kerouac type adventures, you know, the kind of Neil Cassidy Nichols gets on a bus in New York City. And uh, by the time I hit Guatemala City, like eight days later, uh, I had six novels, you know, in my, in my notebook. And uh, Guatemala uh, blew the top of my head off. And almost instantly I became aware that most of the oppression in Guatemala, on the streets, you know, people who deliberately cripple themselves in order to beg, um, people uh, in the marketplace selling you fruits and vegetables, going blind from filarial worms in their eyeballs, you know, women with half-dead children in their arms dying of amoebic dysentery, uh, the incredible poverty, the, the fact that um, the maid that cleaned my friend's apartment uh, would get a dollar a day for scrubbing on her hands and knees from seven in the morning till ten at night, right? And when I tried to give her an, an extra dollar, she thought I was propositioning her as a whore, you know? Uh, I became aware almost instantly that this oppression in Guatemala could be traced directly to the United States. I remember going to parties at the U.S. Embassy, uh, which was sandbagged, you know, all around machine gun nests, barbed wire, that kind of stuff, on an embassy row where that was the only embassy that had that kind of security. I remember going to see my friend play in a softball game, you know, with Americans there, where there were soldiers with M-16s in the, in the grandstand, you know, in case anyone uh, tried to make an attack uh, on the Americans there. Uh, at that time, uh, Luis Turcios Lima and Cesar Montes were head of the Fuerzas Armadas Rebelde in Guatemala, which was a powerful revolutionary group, um, getting a lot of press um, that I couldn't avoid. Um, I talked to, I had just never seen so much destitution in my life and never talked to so many people who hated the United States. Um, in two months, um, I remember just getting a crash course in Guatemalan history, crash course in the history of like United Fruits, Standard Brands, reading people like Miguel Angel Asturias, the Guatemalan writer who got a Nobel Prize, you know, for writing things like El Señor Presidente, which is a history of United Fruit in Guatemala. Um, I also never was in a country where there was so much Racism, for example, Guatemala is a country that's almost 100% dark-skinned, black-haired people. And all the advertisements for shoes, food, colognes would show blonde, blue-eyed people. You know, it was like reading comic books during World War II. You know, the blonde, blue-eyed, huge Americans against the little slanty-eyed, yellow, fang-toothed Japanese, right? You know, all of us were radicalized. Guatemala radicalized almost everyone. I mean, Guatemala... <laughs> Uh, I don't know, maybe a half dozen Americans I met when I was down in Guatemala wound up becoming real heavy in the movement and probably becoming socialist or Marxists and anti-imperialists because of just their experience in Guatemala. Uh, this woman, Diana Outen, wound up becoming a weather person and uh, got accidentally blown up in a famous uh, townhouse uh, bombing in 1970 in New York. Uh, so I don't know anybody that that of my close personal friends who who came out of Guatemala in that time without being radically changed.